All right. Take four on the video. Um, okay, so we're working on uh, building our skateboards here. The, we're going to build the skateboard from the center out. And our end goal is really to have three things. A final board, your negative, go your negative mold here, your positive mold, and then an uncut skateboard with uh, variables in it that you can actually change and it links up to all the other boards automatically. So as you change the tail length or the nose final length or the transition or any of these variables in here, it's gonna link up to your positive mold, your negative mold, your final board and so on, okay? So we're gonna take this one section at a time and your first section that you're gonna work on is your uh, cross section of the of the skateboard. So imagine a skateboard that you cut right in half, and you're looking at the cross section of it, and it's going to look something like this, right? So you're going to hit new sketch. You're going to select the front pane, and you can see the sketch is popping up here. And we're going to put in two lines on the sides, okay? And these are going to be the sides of the rough skateboard. Okay, so the first the first thing that we're going to be making here is actually not the final board. The final board is derived from your uncut skateboard. So we're actually going to start by making the uncut skateboard first, and then we're going to go in and we're going to um, create the molds and the final skateboard in later videos. But what we have to do first is make sure that our shape here. has the right uh, has the right shape on it. So no, that I didn't like that. I'm gonna start over here. My shape is giving me some issues this morning. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our two lines on the side. Boom. Okay. And then we're gonna link them together. And when you're doing this, just make sure that you're not, I don't think it linked up my line. So I think I had an issue over here. See how when I tried to link them together, it didn't put pull them together. So make sure when, if it does that to you, if it's not extruding correctly, you can go up and you can hit the coincident constraint and it'll, it'll lock those guys together. Okay, so now we have this, imagine this being the cross section of a skateboard. This would be kind of a funky skateboard. Uh, but this is the cross section of a skateboard and we're going to put some dimensions on it to make it so that it uh, is the correct So that it is the the correct measurements for our customer, whatever our customer needs So before we start putting measurements in it though Make sure you we want to make sure that this is something that we can go back and make changes to really easily Right, and so if we do a little bit of work up front it's gonna save us a lot of time on the back end of going through and trying to make sure our, our molds are correct, our designs are correct, um, because we can link everything together and have it based on a variable. All right, so we're actually gonna pop out of that real quick, that sketch real quick, and we're gonna make some of our variables before we put uh, dimensions on this. So after hitting the green check button, you're gonna click on your variable tool, and we're gonna make the first one our board thickness. Okay. And so our board thickness, our standard board thickness is going to be half an inch. Okay. And then we're going to make another variable and we're going to call it the width. We're going to call it final width. And so our customer right now is asking for a board that's eight and a half or eight and a quarter inches. And then we're going to do another one that's called concave drop. And we're going to start off with 0.1 for our concave drop. And then we're going to have another variable that is rough width. Okay, and our rough width is going to be 12 inches. Okay, so 
We've got our variables set up for this sketch. These are all the variables that we're going to need for this sketch. And for us to be able to use it in the sketch, the variables actually have to come before the sketch. So we're going to drag them up above the sketch. And then we're going to go into the sketch and we can use some of those variables. So there's a couple of a couple of things that we need to do to make sure that this is correct. This is happening correct. The first one is we need to put in some construction lines. Okay, so we want a construction line so that we can use our so that we can use our concave drop measurement. Otherwise, we've got to do some crazy math um, to get the radius of the concave drop correct. Um, so we're going to have our line going across. And we're going to actually right click on it, call it a construction line, and we're going to do another line all the way across. Okay, and then we're going to make these. Um, tangent to the two curves down here. Okay, so we're going to hit our line here. Now it's tangent, and then we're going to put this line here, here, tangent to that line. Uh oh, what happened here? There we go. Okay, so we've got our two tangent lines. We're also going to be putting in some thickness measurements in here. Okay, so now that we've got our, our board kind of cross section, we've got all our lines in there. What we need to do now is we have actually we have one more line to put in here. Sorry, three more lines. We're going to go one on the side here, and this is going to be another construction line, and then here. Okay, so we do want these to be construction lines as well. Okay, so now you've got, now you've actually got most of your lines in here. There's one more, sorry, I keep, keep messing with you. Keep messing with you, and we need to link it up to where the two tangent lines are. So this one's actually gonna be a little bit crooked to start with, but as we put in measurements, it will straighten out, okay? All right, so now we're ready to put in some measurements. All right, so first of all, we want to make sure that our board is actually linked up with each other. So we want to make sure that this is level with this one. So we're going to um, come over here, and we're going to say horizontal. Okay. And then now as we put in some other measurements in there, it should link up correctly. Okay, so now we're going to go dimension and we want to do our board thickness. So we're going to go through and we're going to make sure our board thickness is correct on all of our measurements. So as we put that measurement in there, we set our board thickness as 0.5. But remember, we want it to be changeable throughout the entire model. So we're going to actually going to use a variable. So we're going to hashtag and we're going to say board thickness. Okay. All right. So made our board thickness 0.5, and we want to do that for here as well. And we're going to say board thickness, and then the center of our board as well. Okay. You can see how we started putting measurements in there. It straightened it out, and so we have board thickness. So now, if we change board thickness it's automatically going to change all of these board thicknesses that are built into our model, okay? So now let's talk about how to, to get the rest of this model um, set up. So you have your, your construction line, and you can see how this construction line moved outside of our board. We don't want that, because that construction line is actually the line where we're gonna cut, make our final cut for our board. So the model that we're building right now is actually the uncut skateboard. So we're trying to build this skateboard, and we're going to cut the skateboard out of the center. Okay. All right. So the way we're going to do that is, you want to make sure for this one that you click on the right lines, especially if your model kind of got messed up a little, like mine did, where it's going all the way across. So you click on the non-construction line. See how I'm not clicking on that dotted line that we want in the center all the way to this guy, and we're gonna put our rough distance in there, okay? So this is hashtag, and we want our rough width. 
Whoa! Okay. So we're going to fix that a little bit later. Sometimes it does that, right? Where it, you put in a dimension and the whole model gets kind of messed up and it looks like things are going crazy. And they're really not. Okay. So next up, what we'll do is we will put in our final cut width. So we're going to go across here to here. Okay. And this is actually going to be our final width. So we've got our final width variable right there. And it's messing it up again, and that's okay. And here's why it's okay, because this board you can see is not centered. So the way we're going to center it is we need to make sure that this sideline is half of the distance from the center of our board thickness. And we can do that using our variable and a math function. So we're going to click on that right line, that right final board line, and this guy right here. And we're going to say that this is our final width divided by two. You can see how it bring, brought everything back down into the center. And so you guys are actually really close to being done here if, if you followed along in the video this long. Um, we're gonna be doing one last thing. We, the only thing that we haven't really used is our concave drop. So clearly this board does not have the correct concave drop, right? So we are going to make it have the correct concave drop by putting in our final measurement that's going to go from our final board cut line to the center of the drop here. And that will determine all of our other measurements for our, for our board as far as the radius is concerned. So we're going to go from our center dot here to here. And we want it to be going side to side and we're going to call this our concave drop. Boom. All right. What do I have? Oh, I have some red lines in here. Doesn't like that. Got something overdimensioned. Okay, so that should be good now. Okay, cool. So, now we're actually ready to we can uh, extrude this and we're just going to extrude it for right now to um, to a distance of 14 inches but in the next video we're going to put in a variable for our wheelbase and that's going to determine the the width of our board here okay or the center of our board so we're going to say 14 inches and then we're going to say symmetric okay from the center of our cut or the center of the center of the board. So now you've got the center part of your board, and, and then we're going to go in and put some do some um, offset planes later on. But for right now, that's this is kind of a long video, so I want to make sure that we've got this part of it down because this is kind of this is what everything is going to be based on. So if we can't get this, no, none of the other things matter. So make sure you've got your variables. Make sure you've linked the variables to the model, and then make sure that you have. Um, your your kind of your rough settings and your final settings and that extrusion we're going to change in a later video but at this point you guys are good but just to give you an idea of what uh, the power of this is uh, using these variables now if we want to make a change based on a customer need so let's say that the customer tested their board out they said ah, I'm not really happy with that mold or that the concave drop I want something a little more aggressive we can put something in there that's like 0.5 okay and now you can see it adjusted our model automatically to have a concave drop of 0.5 which or 0.15 which is you know a more aggressive concave drop than that and that will eventually change and link to all of our other molds so I'm gonna call this I'm gonna rename this um, uncut And I'm going to call it V because this is for my video. Um, but you guys can call it just Uncut Skateboard. Okay. So eventually, you guys are going to get to having the rest of the board. For today, this is what you've created. You've created this center section of that board. Okay. So, all right. Good luck, everybody. Hopefully, uh, you can follow that along. 
Um, again, this is what it should look like at this point and um, have your four variables. That's what I'm looking for. And I should be able to go into your model and change these variables and watch your, watch your model change accordingly. Okay. All right. Good luck, everybody.